Hello and a warm welcome. This is Nationwide on the NTA. I am Lauri Bala Hassan. President Muhammad Buhari has returned to Abuja after a five day visit to his native home, Daurakas, in a state. State House correspondent Adam Musambo reports that the president, who left Katsina Airport at about 11 a.m. local time Wednesday, was seen off by Governor Aminu Bello Masari and other senior Katsina state government officials. On arrival at the Nnamdi Azikiwe International Airport at noon, President Buhari was received by the Minister of FCT, Mohammed Musa Bello, the Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, and other government functionaries. The President was in Daura to celebrate Eid al Kabir, or the Feast of Sacrifice, with his kids and kin, a practice he maintains for a long time. And before leaving Daura, President Mohammed Buhari has challenged youths youths in the country as future leaders to embrace the Change Begins With Me campaign to make Nigeria great through the pursuit of knowledge, patriotic ideals and values that promote national aspirations at an audience with some youth core members. Serving in Dora, the president pledged his unalloyed commitment to the unity and prosperity of the country. was a remarkable moment of history and great significance as the core members interacted freely with President Muhammad Buhari at his Daura residence. <laughs> the president asked the core members to remain focused in life and pursue their dreams, saying those who work hard will surely earn a respectable living. The NYS scheme, he said, has creditably promoted national unity and cohesion by exposing young people to the unique cultural diversities of Nigeria. Please pursue further knowledge and make sure that you make Nigeria great. Get your objective clear in life and maintain focus. There will be no disappointment. Speaking specifically to core members from the southeastern states, the president asked them to reject those fanning the embers of discord and disintegration and work hard towards building a united and indivisible Nigeria. Tell your colleagues that, that wanted Biafra to forget about it. <laughs> uh, let us get together and build this country. It's big enough for us. It is potentially big enough for us in terms of resources. And those who work hard, they will make a, a respectable living. Please, I, I have seen enough of this country. I fought for this country, and I will continue to work for this country. Speaking on behalf of the core members, Musa Ekbewumi Adebolu thanked the president for the honor of receiving them and expressed their strong belief in his administration's programs of reducing unemployment and creating jobs for more Nigerians. Look forward that you are going to fix this Nigeria for the betterment of the youth of this country, sir. We appreciate you. Thank you so much, sir. The core members were full of appreciation for the president's personal gift of cows, bags of rice, and cash for Salah celebration. From Daura, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. And President Muhammad Buhari has joined the media and literary world in wishing Jamaican-born Nigerian veteran journalist Carlton Lindsay Barry a happy birthday as he turns 75 on September 15, 2016. President Buhari felicitates with the poet, novelist, academic and versatile journalist who has lived and worked in Nigeria for 50 years since 1966. A statement by the Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, Femi Adeshino, indicates that the President commends Bari for his love for Nigeria, which inspired his relocation to the country, raise a family and also take up citizenship in the 80s. President Buhari believes the thrust of Bari's writings on Africa 
Africans in diaspora and Afro-Americans have contributed significantly to global discourse on the history and identity of the black race. The president prays that the almighty God will grant Barry longer life, good health and strength to keep projecting his ideas. Nigerians have continued to commend the Muhammadu Buhari administration's Change Begins With Me campaign, which they say is a right step in the right direction to correct past mistakes affecting development and growth. Talatu Ezerike reports that this was part of submissions on NTS Current Affairs program Tuesday Live. In 1984, the Buhari-led military regime launched the war against indiscipline, which many agreed entrenched orderliness and right values for overall growth. Over the years, the values were bastardized as bribery and corruption, culture of indiscipline and impunity, and even insecurity were almost the order of the day. There were efforts like the Do the Right Thing campaign by the National Orientation Agency, but analysts say the mother of them all is the change begins with me in building a society of high ethical values. I am therefore appealing to all Nigerians to be part of this campaign. Our citizens must realize that the change they want to see begins with them. Before you ask where is the change they promise us, you must first ask how far have I changed my ways? The language well understood. When you violate our principles, when you violate our values, we bring you to order. We impose sanctions on you. The Buhari administration is doing a lot of positive work. People that were thought to be above the law, that nobody can touch them, are being touched. We need to strengthen the institutions, but we also need to strengthen personal integrity. Let our conscience not be robust. It is with robust conscience that you commit crimes. When you have a fragile conscience that is easily frightened, you don't know if I do this now, my family will be ashamed, my community will be ashamed, my society will be ashamed. For others, social contracts must be taken seriously, especially by state governments. Appointments into leadership positions must be based on merit. And that's where the change begins with me mantra comes on the table of the, of the government. So you're not making appointment based on nepotism. You're not making appointment based on ethnicity. You're not making appointment based on religion. All of us have to wake up. We should forget the way things were being done before. We, the parents, will do as much as possible to see that uh, uh, we raise our children very well. Analysts are advocating progressive thinking and actions that promote the common good of all. They strongly believe that the nation will overcome her challenges and stand out in development. Talat Izariki, NTA News. Activities marking this year's Eid al Kabir celebrations were rounded off in Dora, President Muhammad Buhari's hometown, with a traditional concert. State House correspondent Adam Musambo reports on the show put together by Paramount ruler of the Emirate, Umar Farouk Umar. <laughs> Traditionally, Hamagadia in Dora is an art of paying homage by the Emir and his entourage Magadia house so as to show rest to the Magadia title. Been for about 18 females, Magadia ruled Dora for many years ago. Ungor Gamji, Chede Tapariki, Ungokori, Wale, among others, were some of the Dora town quarters went round by the Emir and his entourage to mark this year Idil Kabir. Our Magadia traditional driver and also to receive homage from his masses. In his Salah message, Kazana State Governor Amin Bella Masari, represented by the State Secretary Mustafa Inwa, called Nigerians to tolerate current Nigerian economic recession and pray for proper solutions. However, the Emir of Dora, Al Haj Umar Farouk Umar, through his palace secretary, urged Nigerians to unite in order to create avenue for peace to reign in the country. The Dora Haumagadja Daba has in attendance of various dignitaries from within and outside the country.
We apologize for the loss of sound in that report. Moving on now, workers in the federal capital territory say they have keyed into the Change Begins With Me campaign launched by the federal government. Adebola Brooklyn Sunday monitored the resumption of work after the Salah break. It is the first working day of the week after the Eide Kabir public holiday declared by the federal government. In every first of the federal secretariat, workers are already converging to mount their duty posts. Ordinarily, after a holiday like this, you will see many people will not come around. But because we have changed already, so that's why after holiday we are here. And once you don't allow change to begin with you, you'll be left behind. We need to change also, change our attitudes towards work, and then um, so we can move the nation to the next level. It's a very good, uh, well thought out program by the president that at least changed his time with us. After going around some of the offices, workers were busy at their desk towards contributing to national development. Jubri Yakubu, however, suggests a way that. Hello, Lori. Good to see you. On a normal working day, it takes a commuter nothing less than an hour to get to Victoria Island from the National Stadium in Suruleri. But today being the first working day after the public holiday, traffic on the axis is light. However, the major bottlenecks on the road still slow down movements. Motorists and commuters plying the National Stadium CMS to Victoria Island route on a... vehicles. Towards the realization of a success of this initiative, the Corps decided to have the sensitization exercise with stakeholders. The Corps Marshal, represented by the Deputy Corps Marshal Training, Ademola Lawal, highlighted some advantages of the use of the device, which include reduction in fuel consumption, low cost of maintenance, and also the importance of good tires. We don't need to take one and see if it's between life and death. All we need to do is just do things in the normal way. The Lagos State Sector Commander, Hajinos Omeje, also used the opportunity to address the executives and the drivers on the need for them to appreciate the new speed limiting device as a strategy to save driving. Through local subtle arrangement and that's Lagos. We did also say that we're going to make Lagos uh, investment friendly. You, you've only come back to, to show something to Nigerians that beyond the economic recession that Nigeria is experiencing, your total belief and the total belief of the German government in the economics of Nigeria is unshaken. Earlier, the leader of the delegation, Isabel North, said they have established 23 training centers all over the world, training about 14,000 people annually, and that they would like to do the same training centers in Lagos. These training centers are geared to train on the one hand the um, architects and civil engineers in the use of uh, drywall, in the use in acoustics and in fire protection and uh, on the other hand actually train craftsmen on how to physically and technically install these new products. North, however, solicited the support of the state government in land space for the training centers and permit issues, a request which was instantly granted by the governor. In Lagos, Rosa Osula, NTA News. The Lagos State House of Assembly recently approved 100 billion naira worth of bond for the state government spanning between 2016 and 2019, which according to them was necessary for the development of the state and would be repaid through the state's internally generated revenue. Lagos, Nusa, Usula, NTA News. And those are top stories at this are from Lagos back to you, Lorraine Abuja. For the rest of nationwide. Laura, over to you. Thank you, Abdullahi. And turning our attention now to agriculture.
The federal government says it is molding a system that will make agriculture attractive to youths in the Niger Delta, as the government intensifies efforts towards addressing environmental and socio-economic challenges in the oil-producing states. This is at a town hall meeting in Bayelsa State, South South Nigeria, where the Ijo Youth Council pledged its commitment to support President Muhammadu Buhari's leadership. Musa Babaliu has the details. The town hall meeting with farmers in Yenagua, Bayelsa State, is to educate and sensitize the farmers on the agricultural policy of the present administration. The forum, chaired by the Minister of State for Agriculture, Henakin Lokobiri, the United States of America for value chain development and agriculture. Achigli Magaji reports. The Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice, Mike Gusa, signed on behalf of the state government, while Nursing Smith signed on behalf of the firm, Juma International. This is the food basket to the nation. Our commitment in working with you is to expand this. We want to become we want Benway State to become the organic food basket to the world. While receiving the document, Governor Samuel Otom says this will help develop the potentials for agriculture in the state and assure the firm of good return on their investments. All that has been said here is what we have been dreaming, what we have been looking onto. While the firm comes with the financial, technical, and logistic backing, the state government is required to provide the land and the security. In Makudi, Achigli Magaji, NTNews. A non-governmental organization, OMEP Nigeria, has called for the establishment of a nursery and primary school at the Shelter Support Project for Internally Displaced Persons located at Daudu in Guma, local government area of the state. National President of the group, Dr. Pat Okeke, made the request, the request while presenting relief materials to internally displaced children in Guma, local government area. John Yaku has details. OMEP, which is an acronym in French, means World Organization for Early Child Education. The non-governmental organization was founded in 1948 with the aim of defending and promoting the rights of the child to education. National President OMEP, Dr. Pat Okeke, said the organization is concerned with the plight of displaced children, hence their visit to the camp to identify with them and give them a helping hand. After her assessment of the camp, Dr. Okeke observed that a school must be included in the camp to ensure continuity of education. OMEP is about children, about their welfare and about their education. The wife of the Benue State Governor, represented by her senior special assistant on administration, Jafet Gugu, appreciated efforts of OMEP Nigeria, saying the demand for a school at the camp is the best gift for the displaced children. Beneficiaries of the gesture were full of joy. Benue State Chairman, Non-Governmental Organization Network, Rashid Chonzu, says though the shelter support project is yet to be occupied by the IDPs, work is in progress to ensure its completion within two weeks. Items donated include 30 mattresses and clothing. In Daudu, Gumaluku government area, John Yaku, NTA News. Users of kerosene have lamented the continuous increase in the price of the product, saying it has made life more difficult for them. Charles Saba, who examines this development, also looks at the alternative ways Alternatives many people have resorted to. The dual purpose kerosene DPK serves as fuel for cooking for most families and other household purposes such as lanterns. The federal government, through its removal of kerosene subsidy policy, increased the pump price of the product from 50 naira per liter to 83 and from 83 to its present price of 151 naira at the NMPC mega station in Makudi. Kerosene, however, goes for between 175 and 200 naira per liter in some filling stations and higher at retail points for between 280 and 300 naira per liter. What informed this upward review trend in the price of the product? When the dollar is gone up, you know the prices will go up because we depend on the potential. 
Some users of kerosene who expressed worry about the phenomenon said they are struggling to survive. Before, if you carry 400, you can afford this thing. So when you fill it, you can see maybe you can use it like one month. Eh? But now, for 450, you cannot afford this one. So there are, however, alternatives to kerosene like liquefied natural gas, LNG, charcoal, and even firewood, which are considered more economical. Mixed feelings trail the use of these alternative products as a gas cylinder of 14.9 kg goes for 11,500 naira at official price and nearly doubled at independent shops. A bag of charcoal sells for between 1,600 and 1,800 naira per bag. In Makudi, Charles Abba, NTA News. And that will be it from Makuri. Laura, it's back to you for the rest of Nationwide. Good afternoon. Many thanks, Pam. You can watch this news live online via the NTA mobile app, which you can download on your Android device at the Google Play Store or at the Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. You're watching Nationwide on the NTA. We now take a break for some messages. The news continues shortly. Don't go away. When has it reached this? Much less this. And this. And this. And this. Help reclaim our commonwealth. Lend your support to the fight against corruption for a better Nigeria. Now, you can hold that dream occasion without stress. Horizon Caterers will provide answers to all your catering questions. Exquisite hall designs, mouth-watering and nourishing local and continental cuisine. Suitable for all types of ceremonies, including weddings, AGMs, business luncheon, cocktails. Name it, we can bring it. Our chefs and executive waiters give your guests that unforgettable experience in service. Our service covers all states of the Federation. Call us today to book your locations. 0805-502-9637 0805-502-9637 0905-502-9637-0803-450-9626-0909-9708-111. Horizon Caterers. Experience catering beyond the horizon. You have given me the length and diameter. Mm. What is the radius? Radio. The he goat is dancing on the street and the foolish. And now the philandra is applauding the stupidity of the he goat. Hey. This week on your award winning comedy series, Professor John Boo, starring Kanayo Okanayo, Messi Johnson, Queen Wokoye, Funky Malam, Ime Bishop. Saga, Saga, Saga. Hey, young man. What is your waist size? Terrible. Uh, what's the size you're wearing? Swag 60. What do you? Double the size? Because we doubled your generation. Professor John Boone, fasten your seatbelts this Tuesday and Friday, 8.30 to 9 p.m. on NTN Network, International and Star Times. It's absolutely bombastic. Over and out. The largest data network, Glow, Grandmasters of Data.
to Sharon Ultimate Hotels, Abuja. The ultimate place to be. Intend to radically change Newman Street. My company has a track record of converting slums into new cities. Many years of experience has taught us to fish out allies within the communities we want to transform. Don't listen to your husband. Listen to me. Give me a boy. And the two of you may never even have to work again. What's your name? Oh, I'm not sure. Oh, I'm not sure. Oh, I'm not sure. 15 years, let us no longer lose any opportunity for the future. Our alternative is agriculture immediately and solid minerals. We should be appreciative of the president who has again diverted attention to this issue of agriculture. The present administration is determined to go back to planning, identify priorities beforehand. When money comes, it is applied to that purpose. And you can see the results then. We are determined to rehabilitate our country, uh, especially for our children and our grandchildren. Many thanks for rejoining us and to political matters now. The two factions of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in Undo State appear to be on collision course. This follows the vandalism of the campaign office of a rival PDP governorship candidate in the state, Mr. Jimo Ibrahim. Olubukola Aduo has details. Flags and b bus erected at the Jimo Ibrahim campaign office along Oyemekun Road in Akura, the Ondo State capital, among other property, were vandalized by hoodlums on Saturday night, but no one was injured. Briefing newsmen on the development, the chairman of the Alimadu Sharif-led PDP in the state, Mr. B. Koroye, said he and other members of the party had earlier received several threats from some people suspected to be from the McAfee-led PDP. Some guys came in uh, uh, Mr. Jagadeh's... Uh, Branded vehicle, uh, promising that they will come and attack them. And uh, at about uh, nine o'clock, I started receiving messages that the place has been terribly attacked. The McAfee led PDP described the allegations as baseless, adding that its governorship candidate, Mr. Ita Jagede, is adverse to violence in all ramifications. It is very untrue. It is very, very untrue. And we don't have any hand in it. It should look somewhere else. Meanwhile, the Ondo State Police Public Relations Officer, Mr. Femi Joseph, said the command has begun investigation into the incident in Akure, Olubukola, Aduo, NTA News. National Human Rights Commission officials visit Enugu prison. Let's now join Chiagonu in Enugu for details and more. Hello, Chiagonu, it's over to you. 
All right, good afternoon and welcome to Enugu. The National Human Rights Commission, in partnership with the Enugu State Government, is to seek possible ways of empowering inmates and decongesting the Enugu prisons. The Executive Secretary of the Commission, Professor Ben Angwe, said this when he visited the Enugu prison. Ijoma Ugweke reports that the human rights bus was accompanied on the visit by the State Governor, Ifani Ugwani. The Enugu prisons, which has a capacity of 625, is currently accommodating about 1,800 inmates, majority of who are on awaiting trial. The situation Professor Angwe described as worrisome and demands urgent attention. He said the Human Rights Commission is working with Enugu State Government to ensure renovation of the prisons to make the environment conducive for inmates. He maintained that they are making plans to empower inmates for their release. To ensure that most of you here who are not supposed to be here yes. should not be here. Some innovation should start immediately in your cells. Governor Ifani Uguan, who accompanied the executive secretary with the attorney general of the state, encouraged the prison inmates and gave them hope that government will do all within its powers to address their challenges. I want to assure and reassure each and every one of you that any state government will work with them to ensure, just like he said, that we do the need for. And I'm sure you will smile. Other dignitaries at the visit, including Senator Chuka Otaze, applauded the efforts of the National Human Rights Commission and the state government for rising up to the problems at the Enugu prisons. In Enugu, Ijomu Gweke, NTA News. The Bonyi State Police Command has rescued six children allegedly adopted by suspected child traffickers operating in Ebony, Anambra and Delta state axis. The Commissioner of Police, Peace Ibekwe Abdallah, disclosed this while parading some members of the gang before newsmen at the command headquarters in Abakiliki. Chinaza John tells us more. Include the head of the department in Anambra State Ministry of Women Affairs, who allegedly coordinated the sale of one of the children to a woman in Umuawolo, Oka South of Anambra State, at the cost of 750,000 naira. She applied for the child and she came. Because the ministry has no child. I met Chizov in the church. Chizov told me he has a child. I asked Chizov, is it a real source? She says yes. This March this year, this woman called me, said that there is a child. Make her bring 30,000 for registration. After two weeks, they called me again, said that I should bring 700,000. The collector give me a child. I don't know that child is illegal. Mothers of the other victims said they were tricked into a fake marriage by the syndicates who ended up selling their children. He won't marry me. He carry me go to Asaba, can't keep me for a hotel. Say he won't carry my picking, go put for school. I know see him again. The Commissioner of Police, Peace Ibekwe Abdallah, disclosed that the arrest of the suspects led to the rescue of some of the children at some orphanage home in Paolo Anambra State, where they were kept for interested buyers. Most of them, of course, are under arrest. Some have already been uh, charged to court. Commissioner Abdallah, who disclosed that some of the victims have already been reunited with their parents, advised them to ensure that they leave their children to responsible adults who can answer and defend them in case of emergency. In Abakaliki, Chinaza John, NT News. The Federal Road Safety Commission says there will be no extension in the October 1st enforcement date on speed limit device implementation across the country. The co marshal Boboye Oyeyemi, settled this during a stakeholders meeting in Enugu. Ngozi Silva, Technicare, tells us more. The stakeholders meeting is to sensitize road users and relevant authorities on the imperative of using the speed limit device. The Federal Safety Commission co marshal Boboye Oyeyemi, represented by the Deputy co marshal Administration and Human Resources, Daniel Wachiku, said record shows that overspeeding accounts for more than 70% of road crashes in the country. Statistics denoted increases during the ember months, hence the need for its implementation. He explained that the device would prevent motorists from exceeding the government-approved speed limit 
due to its calibration, stating that from October 1st this year, the Commission will impound all vehicles without speed limit device. From 1st October 2016, road safety will commence enforcement. Do not be arrested because you don't have speed limiting device in your vehicle. Other stakeholders were commending the new technological innovation expressed their willingness to give maximum support to the Federal Road Safety Commission in order to ensure the full implementation of this initiative. With everything that will give life. The Enugu State Sector Commander of the Federal Road Safety Commission, Mr. Daniel Mende, advised motorists to install the speed limiter device through accredited marketers or come to their office for proper guidance. In Enugu, Ngozi Silva Technical, NTA News. That's it from here. Over to you now, Laurie, for the rest of Nationwide. Good afternoon. Thank you, Chair Gonu. And talking health, the people's right to health include the right of access to a reliable standard of health care and assurance that drugs received are not only genuine but safe, effective and affordable. Guests on NTS Good Morning Nigeria were unanimous in their views that shutting down any outlet identified for selling fake drug authentication would curb the scourge of fake drugs and quackery in the pharmaceutical society of Nigeria. Abdul Malik Adiyu reports. It is often referred to as the greatest evil of our time and the highest weapon of terrorism against public health or an act of economic sabotage. Drug counterfeiting is the most devastating attack on public health in the world over. Experts on Good Morning Nigeria say it is imperative that National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC, and other stakeholders to intensify efforts in the regulation and control of importation, manufacture, distribution, and sales of drugs in order to ensure the availability of safety and quality pharmaceutical products for citizens. Policy inconsistency. We have the mo mobile authentication service. In addition to that, we're already talking in-house of using the track and trace method. Mm -hmm. And this is the method that is used globally. So it's a joint effort. NAFTA cannot do it alone. So we all have to work together. The discussions encourage the media as a watchdog to promote public awareness on drug matters in the country. In Abuja, Abdul Malik Adio, NTA News. Civil servants in Plateau State resume with a commitment to scale up productivity. For this and more, let's join Caleb in Joss. Hello, Caleb. Hello, Lore. Thank you for joining us in Joss. Governor Simon Lalong has commended to the Plateau State Muslim Uma for successful Eid al Kabir celebration and prayers for stability and peace in the state. The governor gave the remarks during a Salah homage by the Muslim Uma in the state at the governor's residence. Correspondent Kim Gotts has the report. Receiving the Plateau State Muslim Uma by Governor Simon Lalong and other senior government officials of the state appreciated Council of Uma for the show of concern and love for the state during the Eid prayers. He said his government will continue to address the challenges faced by the Uma to ensure unity, peace, and development of the state. I also want to thank you and the entire Uma for the support we are getting. And uh, this is the kind of support that we are expecting, not only for Plateau State, but for Nigeria in general. Leader of the delegation, Chairman Plateau State Jamaatu Nasru Islam and Emir of Wasi Al Haji Sambu Haruna, represented by the Emir of Kanam, Muhammadu Babangida, applauded the federal government's efforts in the fight against insurgency in the Northeast that led to the peaceful Salah celebration. To inform you of your contingents in the South Kingdom of Saudi Arabia under the able leadership of our chairman of the JNI, the Emir of Wase, Muhammad Sambo Haruna, a successful ritual activities. And uh, Plateau State has been recognized and has been awarded first position in terms of sanitation at the Shema in Nuna. The peak of the event is the presentation of the Salah Kola by Governor Simon Lalong to the Plateau State Muslim Ummah in Jos, Kim Gods, NTA News. 
Equity, fairness, and true brotherliness have been described as the secret ingredients for peaceful coexistence among the people of Dengi, Kanam, local government area of Plateau State. Correspondent Nit Dimka reports that illustrious sons of the community charged the people of the area to uphold these virtues during and after the festivities. Converged on the palace in their multitude for the annual Idil Kabir Durba, the majestic procession by the Emir and his council of chiefs signals the commencement of the colorful festival. <laughs> Emir of Kanam, Muazu Muhammad II, in his address, stressed the need for the citizenry to imbibe the lessons of the Eid beyond the festive season. He described the need for harmonious coexistence as panacea for the much desired economic and infrastructural development of the community. We want them to continue to endure the situation we found ourselves as a country and as a nation. We should love one another and continue to support government in defense to security. Also in Dengi to felicitate with the people is the chairman, Langtang North Local Government Area, Daniel Du, who expressed appreciation for the role of the Emirate Council in the peace process in the area in particular and the state at large. The Deputy Speaker, Plateau State House of Assembly, Yusuf Gagdi, urged the people to, in spite of the lean resources across board, imbibe the culture of giving and true sacrifice as those are the virtues of the period. You must look inward to seeing how you can, you know, get something to the people so that perhaps few of them will have the privileges of performing the sacrifice, which is the significance of this moment. Meanwhile, federal and civil servants in Plateau State have resolved to be more dedicated to their duties. Correspondent Ijoma Ozomina reports that the workers said this at the resumption of work after the long salad break. At Joseph Gong Work Secretariat, workers were at their various offices attending workers' official matters to contribute their quota for the development of the state. An attitude of working with great optimism. You know, let, let's put in our best. We are back. We are expected to face our work with vigor. And I think uh, that has been done. Quite a number of civil servants are already on their seats doing their job. The state head of service, Mr. Izam Azi, who also resumed work early this morning, said indiscipline at work will no longer be tolerated. Now that uh, work has resumed, I want to call the workers uh, to be sure that uh, they are in their respective offices doing their work and to also remind them of the fact that uh, we now have attendance registers, uh, that uh, workers register their name when they come in. Similarly, at the federal sector, work has resumed in earnest as workers were at their duty posts. This will normal will continue. The office work will continue. Everything will work fine. As a patriotic Nigerian, or citizen of Nigeria, I need to resume my uh, in my office and give my best. Angels, Ijoma Ozemina, NTA News. We now rejoin Lore in Abuja. Thank you. Thank you, Caleb. And travelers from Abuja to Kaduna have commended the federal government for providing train services along the route. In an interview with Adebola Brooklyn Sunday, the people, however, asked for more services along other routes. Infrastructure and the other to effectively manage it. The completion of the Abuja Kaduna Rail has been receiving commendations from Nigerians. On arrival at the station, we met few customers who were waiting for the boarding time. The speed, instead of like 2 hours 40 minutes for the ride, it can be 2 hours or even lesser. The few passengers in an orderly manner can themselves for ticket verification before boarding. Everything outside there is very, very okay. I like the whole place. I like the environment. It's clean. I needed to carry my children to come and see what is happening. Around nine stations from Idu and Rigasa in Kaduna State, 
Some passengers, however, suggest that there should be an extension of this project to every part of the country, as it will save costs and at the same time ease pressure on the road. On our way out were customers trooping to board the same train that just left. Abdullah Ali is one of the passengers who missed the train. Apart from losing the money we use in purchasing the ticket, we also lose the money in buying fuel from the city uh, down to this place. Some other disappointed passengers like Abdullah Haliu also suggests a way out of this challenge. It would have been easier for us and in online booking something so that as soon as you come you just go straight to the um, place where you can enter the train. We need to provide more accessible routes to the station. Although very pleased with the development, customers want management of the station to make available shuttle buses within the city centre for effective utilization of rail transport service in Nigeria. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. In talking sports, Nigeria's Flamingos set for the 2016 FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup as Alexander Seferin emerges new president of UEFA. Kenne Imagodike brings us details on sports updates. After a two-day rest, Nigeria's men's under-19 cricket team are in high spirits ahead of their fourth match at the ongoing 2018 World Cup Division II qualifiers in Johannesburg, South Africa. The Junior Greens confront Botswana at the Willow Moor Park in Benoni Thursday after three successive wins over Zambia, Rwanda and Sierra Leone, with captain Obe Sylvester making 88 runs to hand Nigeria an impressive 209 runs all out in 49 overs against their West African opponents. Barely two weeks to the kickoff of the fifth FIFA and the 17 Women's World Cup Finals in Jordan, coach Balaniku has again assured that the Flamingos will be ready for the challenge on a bigger stage, having made remarkable improvement in their Abuja training camp since the end of July. The Flamingos, which have participated in every edition of the championship since its inception in 2008, will tackle their Brazilian counterparts on October 1 in their first match of Jordan 2016 